So Brian Steele proceeds to play this two hour recording of, a, of an interview. Detective Quinn does this interview with Adrian Bean just a few days after the September 11th incident. Right. The crash and the shooting and all the robbery, all this type of stuff. Just a few days after. Adrian Bean is 35 years old at that time. Listen, he is he is offering up so much information in that in that interview, bro. First of all, he did lie a couple times. He even admitted the line a couple times. He even said he referenced in in the Detective Quinn interview. He referenced whatever other interview that he did that Brian Steele is trying to reference also. So he, there is for sure another interview out there somewhere, unless they destroyed it. But there, there definitely another interview happened. And they all agreed that Adrian Bean lied in that other interview because that was the reason, I guess, Detective Quinn was getting another one, getting another interview from him because they all deemed that the first one to be a lie. Oh, the first one is also the, the, the interview where he told the detective or whoever he told it to, the police officer, that his friend Frederick, Big Fred, was the one driving. So he he makes mention of that interview multiple, multiple times. So, again, that's what Brian Steele was arguing about them getting rid of evidence. That's a, a witness testimony. I mean, a witness statement is evidence, even if it's a lie. It still counts. But anyway, so in this in this in this recording, Detective Quinn is doing this is to me. I'm listening to it. It was like a movie. It was like a TV show. And it makes sense because a lot of these crime TV shows, they get a lot of the information from police officers and former police officers. That, those are the consultants on these shows who give up this information. So and Detective Quinn and um, uh, Velasquez actually do have a TV show, Atlanta Homicide. But. So Detective Quinn is talking to him. He's trying to do the whole cool thing. Like, yeah, man, I've been, I'm, I'm from Atlanta. I know, I understand the streets. Like, I, I probably relate more to the streets than I do with these police officers. I really don't even like wearing my uniform. Like, I just hate wearing my uniform. Like, I'm really, uh, you know, I really connect with the people for real. I'm not really, you know, I'm not like the rest of these cops for real. And I got a lot of time in, so I really, really, really understand these areas. Like, I've been in Cleveland Ave 15 years. I did this other area. 10 years, like I've been around for a long time, 25 years. He said that back in, or he said 28 years. So in 2013, he had, he had already been a police officer for 28 years or whatever. So he was really putting on the whole game, like, yo, you could talk to me. Like, first of all, so this is what whole, Detective Quinn's whole thing was when he was talking to Adrian Bean back in the day, in 2013. It was pretty much, I've been around the block. I know these areas. I know all the street dudes over here. And I know what's going on. I really know what, what happened here because people already told me what happened. But I'm coming to you because you lied before. So just tell me the real. It's not going to be too crazy. And he's like, yo, really? You're not even part of my investigation for real. I'm I'm here investigating the officer involved shooting. I just got to come back to you because you're involved in the overall situation and you lied before. I just need you to tell me the truth and then I can move on. Like you're not being charged with anything related to me. My whole, what I'm here for is different than you. I just need a good statement. I just need accurate information and I could go forward from there. So he did that whole thing, ran that whole thing down. And Adrian Bean is doing like the stereotypical first 48 thing. Hey, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I ain't having to do with it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you these other names. I'm going to let you know what they did. But I really ain't had nothing to do with it. I swear. I swear I didn't. So he told his whole lie. Now, again, this is a flashback that we listened to in the court. This is from 2013. So he's like uh, pretty much saying that, you know, we was all linked up or whatever. I got the I got the car from skateboard, which is the Brian guy. I got the car from skateboard. And so we riding around. We saying we're going to go to get some lean and we was going to split the money. You know, the lean was going to be one hundred and fifty dollars. We're going to split it fifty dollars each. And we trying to. You know, look out for my homeboy, Big Fred, that just got out of jail a couple of days ago, out of prison or whatever. So we showing him a good time. I just took him shopping, get him some clothes and all that. So then, so then he said, then Young Thug get out the car and he knew about Dirty Red having some money. So then he come back to the car, tell us about it. Then we go over there and they jump out the car and did whatever they did. He like me and Fred, we didn't know nothing about it. We was, we was just there trying to get the lean or whatever. So then... Now, I'm shortening this whole thing. This is very, this is a very long video, uh, recording. So, of course, like a few minutes after that, um, Detective Quinn, I guess Detective Quinn knew he was lying. So we pretty much is like, 
I mean, he, he so Detective Quinn is telling uh, Adrian Bean back in 2013, like, yo, I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I, and I get it. You're saying that you didn't know anything about it and, and, and all this. Do you want me to take this story back to, to, my, to my guys, and this is the story you want me to turn in? Because I don't. He pretty much like, this is a lie still. I know this is still a lie. So is this what you want me to really go back and tell everybody that you told me? And he like, nah, you know what, man? I'm going to just tell you the real. I'm going to tell you the real. Like, I was involved. It was it was really, you know, we was going to rob somebody. I'm going to ask you a straight question. Are you the driver on this lick for a robbery? That's all I want to know. You're not the gunman. Are you the driver on a robbery? This is the driver. You're the driver. All right, so what's the move? Tell me the move. I'm going to get it all together. Yeah, I mean, but if I got to send it over there like this, from my perspective, I ain't gonna let you do it. All right, all right. All right. tell me. What the lean bullshit I told you first? Okay. All right. Queen. All right. All right. You know what I mean? He like, but you wasn't doing the robbery. You was just the one driving for the robbery. He like, yeah, we was just driving. He like, so why did why did y'all send DK to go do that? He like, I didn't. Thug did. That was Thug's guy. That's Thug's foot soldier. Soldier. He'll do anything Thug tell him to do. So. <laughs> So he said he'll do anything. Th- and then so Detective Quinn. Now, this is this was jarring to me. This is what I'm about to tell you. was To me, stood out like, I'm going to tell you. He said, who is Thug, though? Because I don't have, like, all these people that I have, I got three people, and these are the names of the people. So who is Thug? He's like, Thug, he got away. He he. So he said, like, you telling me that somebody else was with y'all and he got away or whatever. So he like, who is, who is that? He was like, Thug. Um, he was like, what's his real name? He like, I don't know his real name. I just know Lil Jeff. He like, so how long have you been knowing him? He like, I don't know him. I know his dad. He's like, what's his dad's real name? He like, I don't know. I just know him as Jeff, Jeff Rowe, whatever he said. So he like, um, he like, who, who you talking about? Jeff, Lil Jeff. The cop is like, you talking about the skinny kid that be standing outside McDonald's all the time. The real skinny kid that wear the, the weird pants, like a white boy. He's like, um, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Something like that. So this, and let me tell you why that was jarring to me, right? It was jarring to me because Young Thug, first of all, Young Thug already had music buzzing in the streets at that time. Twenty, That's the end of 2013, fall 2013. But Thug was already buzzing. The, the, the high level police, the, the, those level police didn't even know who he was yet. They didn't know his rap name. They didn't know his, his real name. That means... Adrian Bean is the one who kicked off, essentially, the entire investigation of Young Thug and YSL as a criminal street gang. From that interrogation right there, that's where it started. They didn't know who YSL was at that time. YSL wasn't a, they didn't, they they was looking at, um, at that time, they would have only been focused on Rock Crew and the Bloods or whatever in that area. They didn't know nothing about YSL. And they, he, Adrian Bean didn't tell him nothing about YSL. He told him something about Young Thug. And then from there, that kicked off an investigation against Young Thug. And that's when they found out all his YSL stuff. If y'all remember back to um, Detective Belknap, when he first testified on the first day, when they asked him how long he had been looking into Young Thug, he said since about 2013. When did this incident happen? 2013. He said, how long you, they asked him, how long you been looking in the uh, YSL and, and he like 2013. Do y'all realize? So all of this, this enti- I'm talking about the entire Rico case is possible because Adrian Bean, while Young Thug was still a local regional artist, Adrian Bean told that man that a person who got away from the crime scene, who they had no idea was even involved, was there that day. And was in a gang. Because, by the way, later on in the tape and recording, he also brought up, this, again, offering up information that nobody asked for. So that's how you know there's a difference between somebody who just saying anything to get out of trouble and somebody who's doing way too much. Snitching. Doing way too much. Again, I'm not here to tell y'all whether snitching is bad or wrong or bad or good. But we just have to identify it when it is, when it's happening. Snitching in and of itself is not the crime. You, if it's your moral compass to do that, have to live with it and stand on it. But what you can't do is say you didn't snitch. The word snitch has a definition and you can go look it up and we can all say, okay, these things fall under that category and this is. So 
Th- this whole thing is snitching. But Adrian Bean says, yeah, so he, he's pretty much letting Detective Quinn know, I like, listen, I'm going to give you this information, but I don't want, don't tell them that I told you this because I'm a family man. I don't want no problems with them dudes. It's 180 of them little motherfuckers. I got to get sure I got the seat placement in the car. I'm not understanding how nobody got hurt worse than that. Was there a girl in the car anywhere? There's no girl. You are just hiding that from your wife. There is no girl nowhere in the car. No girl. No okay. The girl that they think is a girl, Officer Quinn. So I ain't mean to touch it. But the girl they think is a right. girl is thug. I gave you thug, man. Thug got the wild hair. They think Okay. Got there you, know you go. Think, I'm going to just keep it off. Okay. All right. Because he, he, you know he, he looked a little bit like a girl. Man, I mean, no car. It's over 180 of these little motherfuckers. He does look a little bit it's, like it's a girl. Over 180 of these little motherfuckers. So, with me, I'm a family man. I ain't trying to get in comfort. Where, where's Thug sitting? Up front or in the back? He's in the back with DK. He like, it's 180 of them. It's, it's a lot of them and they crazy. Don't tell them that I'm involved with telling you nothing because I don't want no beef. I don't want no smoke with them. Pretty much saying like, so, so what I'm saying is, they didn't know who none of them kids, they were kids at that time. For, this man was 35. They was like, Doug was the older one at like 21, 22. You understand? The rest of them was younger than Doug, mostly. So you got to think about it. There's a bunch of kids that was wild in the streets and pretty much most of them was off of the radar of the, of the police. Like, of course, they knew about DK, Walter Murphy. They knew about Trontavia Stevens because they had been getting in trouble since they was little kids. But for the most part, they didn't know who the rest of them was. They for sure didn't have no list of 180 kids to, that they could be looking at and all that. So, you know, um, this man, 35 years old, going up in there and telling him, yo, don't tell this. It's like 180 of them. Like, he, he and a the thug, they, they in the gang. Like, they got these gang stuff. I don't want nothing to do with that. Like, you know, uh, he says something like, yeah, they in the gang. Whatever the blood stuff is, the sex, money, murder. Like, he's offering all of this up. Detective Quinn is probably like, whoa. So DK, who's he friends with in the car? Who's so, he tight with? Him, him and Thug, they down with each other. They gang man. They got right. themselves some type of blood. Sex. How long have you known Thug? I, don't, I know his father. I've been knowing his father for over a couple of years now. You know what I mean? And like I said, Thug just started coming around here. But how long have you known he exists as a human being? How long has he known? I can't remember. So how long? In years. If you had to guess. Because I don't know his real name. What's the real name, man? Uh, Lil Jeff. That's all I know. He called him Lil Jeff. Jeff. But you don't know his last name? What his daddy last name, man? I don't know his daddy last name. I know his daddy named Jeff Rope. Lil Jeff. Jeff. Okay. I'll figure that out before we leave. I mean, it's not hard. You got a bunch of young dudes that's sex, sex, money, murder. He a rapper. He do what? His name is what? Egregious. Now, again, I'm giving the shortened version of it, and i am probably been talking about this much longer than I planned on it. But y'all have to go, y'all have to go, li- just go listen to Friday's testimony. Adrian Bean, my boy, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, man. Dang, I feel bad for you, man, but I, I don't know. I don't know how you get past this one, man. Honestly. I don't know where he lives right now. Oh, 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 by the way, on Thursday when they were arguing, they played Adrian Bean's, um, they played that 10-minute, excuse me, they played that 10-minute um, interview that Brian Steele did with Adrian Bean. In that 10-minute interview that was played on YouTube for everybody to listen to, they said his phone number, like his real phone number from 2023, which was a year ago. Adrian being another thing he got on the stand and said while he was doing his ranting said, y'all didn't put all my information out there. I've been getting phone calls since seven o'clock last night. He's like, I'm still getting phone calls right now while I'm in like while I'm sitting right here. I'm getting phone calls. They blowing my phone up. People calling me and bothering me about man. Listen, this is a this is <laughs> this is this, this is out of hand. And. Remember I was saying like it don't really make sense why they're spending a month on this one incident? It makes sense now because this is the inception of the police finding out about Young Thug and YSL. Even though they never charged Young Thug with the situation, this is when the this is when Young Thug gets on their radar as 
either a blood member or a blood affiliate and a person who had branched off and started his own gang. This is when this is the beginning of it. Pretty much. This incident is the most pivotal incident in this entire landscape. With, with, with that interview that Quinn did with uh, Adrian Bean back in 2013, it shows that uh, I'm, this is allegedly because this is Adrian Bean who's lying. But let's just say he's being factual in that interview. It shows that Young Thug was already a leader in that area at that time. He already had people under him that he could tell what to do and he could make them get violent for him. That was already about 2013 before he was a millionaire status. So that sets the stage for, you know, using this fear tactics and using these these terroristic threats and all everything else that they say happened after that. That pivotal incident and that Adrian Bean testimony and that Adrian Bean statement and interrogation uh, recording sets the stage for everything else that we've been hearing in this whole trial. You see what I'm saying? So it makes sense now why they're spending so much time on it. Also makes sense because that case was never, nobody was ever convicted of that because uh, Mr. Dotson had passed away. The victim, the one who got robbed had passed away. So because of that, they, they pretty much are getting a bunch of stuff out that was, that never came out before. You see what I'm saying? So, man, this is this is this is cold blooded. And the, the craziest thing about it is, the, listen, man, I need y'all to get caught up on this trial, man. Or, or you know, you can keep coming checking checking with me. I, you know, I'm gonna give y'all updates as I give them. But, man, Adrian B, my boy, golly. And I'm just wondering, you know, because they they pay, the camera pans around the courtroom as different things is happening. So I'm just sitting there wondering, like. What is Young Thug thinking as this older gentleman is saying the stuff that he's saying up there? And and even not Young Thug, or well, he heard in Discovery, but young recently is when Young Thug first started hearing these recordings of this man that he was riding with or supposed allegedly riding with telling on him like that. A man that knew his father telling on him like this, giving his police all this information that they had never previously known. You know how if you if you a gang member, right, and you are so off the radar that the police don't even know your last name. Up until that point, you was doing something right. You see what I'm saying? That means you was doing something right up until that point. If the homicide detectives don't know your name as a gang member, that means that you haven't even been remotely close to any murders. Right. They never even had to question you. None of them even know who you was. You was just a skinny kid that stand in front of the McDonald's with the weird pants. This is the most pivotal incident in the in the history of this. Uh, in, when I say in the history in the in the history of the way that this case is shaping out. Right now, I'm not saying that this is, is the most pivotal part in the trial. I'm saying that this incident from September 11, 2013 kicked off all of the rest of the investigations into that area and not into that area, but into young thug as a leader in that area. So essentially this whole trial is hinged on what they found out starting that day. All the research that they did after that was based on them finding out that this man has the power to tell these other guys to do things and they'll do it without any questions asked. Whether that be rob somebody, shoot somebody, take a car, any of that. We found it out starting on this day. Sick. 